name is Keith Kelso. I work at Michigan Sugar Company. I'm the Agricultural Operations Manager. In my position, I work with all our harvest systems that our growers have. I work with logistics and moving beets around from field to field and from factory to factory. So today we're talking about harvest and uh, what we can do to improve on our harvest, if anything. Our growers do a great job of, of planting and taking care of excellent high quality crop. They do a great job of harvesting, but there's always something that possibly could be lacked or something that could be improved on. These beets can be prepared for long-term storage so that once they get into the pile, they can store, we can cool them down, they can store for as long as we need them to. The soil is, is something that really impacts. It's harder for us to, to pile the beets and it's much harder for them to store. Some of our growers have self-propelled harvesters which have scalpers on them for the depoliation phase of harvest. And a scalper goes through and actually takes the scalp right off of the beet. Obviously this is what a scalp looks like. You know, it's got the leaves intact, it's got part of the crown. Generally what we recommend is to leave as much of the crown as you can in the field where you don't want it to hurt your yield, but there is the most impurities of the beet are in the crown. So if we're, if we're having a lot of crown material with, with leaf material, we actually could improve our sugar content if we left some crowns in the field. So obviously on a self-propelled harvester, we have no choice because that's their mode of, their main mode of, of defoliation. But uh, we generally say about the size of this, which is about the size of a silver dollar. Of course, if you have a, if you have a really tall crown and a lot of petioles and leaves going down the side of it, we may have to make this more aggressive and actually cut, cut this, this, uh, this scalp farther down. But we're not as concerned about the volume or the weight of the beet we're leaving in the field. We're more concerned to get those, that leaf material off so that we can have uh, no leaves and actually the beet will store better. It's going to produce less heat and let, it'll burn less energy. So these things are very important for the long-term storage so that when we put our beets in our piles, they can store three, four, five months down the road and uh, give us a high quality pot crop, give us a very good beet payment and make the most sugar that we can make. I'm Jake Maurer from Homer Americas. Um, we've been selling the Homer beet harvester line for five years now. And I'm gonna give a little overview of uh, different uh, settings for different conditions and to uh, show how to, to make adjustments um, to get the best quality of beet um, to the factory. So we'll start at the front. I'm gonna start with uh, topping and we'll uh, work our way back. At the front here we have our flail shredder. So this will uh, take a bulk of the leaf material off. When the beet comes out of the flail shredder, we want three inches roughly of petiole left um, on the top of the beet before it comes into the scalper. Uh, you can leave a little bit more, but then it gets harder to harder to scalp. So after it comes out of the, the, the flail, we come up to the scalper. We have several different adjustments on the scalper. Um, rough adjustment is done with a couple bolts to set the comb height in relation to the scalper knife. Um, fine adjustment can be done from the cabin, um, from the seat while you're harvesting, and it will uh, adjust the scalp thickness. Um, an ideal scalp on a small beat would be somewhere around silver dollar size. Um, even on a large beat, that can be adequate, uh, except for certain conditions, larger beets get uh, more petioles out the side and you have to take a little thicker scalp. Um, on a, you know, you might have to be two inch diameter on a larger beet to get a, to get a good job scalping and to get all the, the petiole off the top. Um, then we come into the, the digging area. And of course, you want to dig the whole beet, um, but the deeper we dig, the more dirt we introduce into the machine that we got to sort out later. So the row unit should be set. So you're digging the whole beet, but not, not excessively because the excess dirt, we just have to deal with later. So as the beets are coming into the lifter, you can see what you have for tail and just lighten up as much as you can. Um, until you, until you start seeing some tail breakage. And then that's the ideal digging depth. 
Now, of course, dry conditions, you're gonna have to dig deeper to, to maintain that tail. In wet conditions, you might be able to shallow up because that beet comes out of the ground pretty easily. Um, when you're lifting in dry conditions, your roll bed, you can set closer to the ground because you're not bringing all that material in and you wanna keep your distance between your shares and your front roller tight together so you don't lose any beets out this gap. Now as conditions get wetter, beets get larger, you can increase this distance and then you get rid of more dirt before you introduce it into the machine and have to deal with it. Um, we have automatic depth control, so you set the depth and you come to a, a furrow in the field, it's automatically gonna run them rows deeper or shallower depending on what they have to do, depending on the crown height of the beet. Um, so it, you, you don't have to do all the adjustments manually. Um, but these are all adjustments you can do right from the seat. You don't have to come out and adjust anything up. So it's real easy to keep dialing it in until you have the perfect sample. Um, the roll bed, you can change the back roll to a grab roll or to a standard um, or with the same direction as the beat flow. So you have some muddier conditions or uh, you're, you're having some issues with the crowns coming in, you can reverse that roll and it'll pull some more of that material out. The roll bed, you can speed up the, you can take the speed from low to high dry conditions you can run it low because you, then you're not beating up the beets too bad for lack of a better term but the the more soil the wetter conditions later on you can speed that roll bed up and you get more action more dirt will drop through so you can speed the back roll up independently of your roll bed as well so if you run that back roll a little faster than your roll bed it will help pull material through as well so then from there, it goes to the transfer web and to the turbines. Now the turbines, this machine is set up with all bar gates for right now because it's dry. When you get in wetter conditions, muddy, late season, um, you can put pigtails on. Those are more aggressive, it'll do more cleaning, but you do some more damage to the beets. So you can, um, and you don't have to go all one way or the other. You can start with a couple sections of pigtails and work your way up. Um, speeds can be controlled independently of each other, all three turbines, so you can change on the fly to get some more tumbling action between maybe the first and second to get them beats to roll around and break some of that material loose instead of that dirt laying on the top of the beats, you'll get them beats to roll and that dirt will go to the bottom. Um, also your height of your grates, right now we have them all the way down. Um, from, this, from the cabin you can set your height hydraulically. So you're getting bigger beats later on, muddier conditions, run your grates up and you'll pass more of that material out before introducing it to your tank. So here's, here we have some examples of uh, scalp sizes on different size beats. Um, smaller beats, you get away with a silver dollar. Uh, larger beats, um, sometimes you gotta get two and a half, three inches around because if you look at the crown of this beat, the petioles are quite wide and come down the side. Um, so on little beats, we can get away with a silver dollar. And on bigger ones, we gotta take a little, little stronger scalp. Now, conditions, varying conditions will cause you to, to have to scalp beats a little bit harder and, and maybe not, not quite as aggressive later on. Dry conditions, um, the leaves kind of typically lay down and we got to hit them a little bit harder sometimes. Uh, later season, the, the leaves are crispier than what they are in, the, in 90 degree heat in September and uh, they scalp a little bit better so you can take a little less scalp and, and do a, a really nice job as well. Um, kind of it boils down to seeing what's coming into the lifter and what's coming into the tank and then we can make adjustments um, accordingly. I'll kind of go over share height settings and roll bed height settings. Uh, early on in the season, we'll want to have the roll bed lower to the ground um, because we have drier conditions, you're not bringing as much material in and beets are generally smaller. So in bringing the roll bed closer to the ground, we're closing the gap between the back of the share and the front roll bed. When do In doing that though, there's benefits and, and detriment to it too. 
The benefit is when you close that gap down, you're not gonna, all them beets are gonna get introduced into the machine. The bad part is you're gonna introduce a little bit more dirt, but in early conditions, that's usually typically not a problem because the, it's really dry. So that soil will fall away really easily. As the beets get larger, um, conditions change, get wetter, you can pick this roll bed up. Um, what that does is increase the distance here where you drop more of that soil out. Because the less soil you introduce into the roll bed, it's, uh, the sample will look better and the less, uh, the less work the machine has to do. Um, so we have several different options. You can, share height is independent of roll bed height. So when you get the roll bed to a position that all the trash is passing underneath, and, uh, but you're still not getting your beet tips, you can run the shares deeper, bringing, you know, and, and you have to run deeper in early conditions um, because of the soil. The, the, the dirt is hard and tight and you'll bust tails unless you dig a little bit deeper. Um, we have automatic share depth control. So when you get it kind of set in the field, when you, if you come to a furrow, you don't automatically have to readjust. Them shares will go down, up and down as they have to to uh, maintain optimum digging depth. Um, a big thing about digging depth is in narrow rows, 20, 22 inch rows, for every half inch of depth that you dig deeper is 30 tons of soil to the acre that you got to deal with. So if you can, it's a fine line. You, When you're digging, make sure you're getting the tip but don't, if you're getting the tip, don't worry about digging any deeper because all you have to do is deal with more soil in the back end of the machine. I'm gonna give a little description of uh, all the different systems on the machine and how we can adjust um, from the seat on the fly. Uh, the first one here um, that shows the, the flail, um, it's the second icon. Um, that's your flail speed. So you can press the jog dial, increase or decrease accordingly. Um, earlier, earlier in the season, uh, the leaves are a little bit uh, rubbery. You will have to probably increase the speed a little bit um, to do a good job of cleaning the bead off except for your you know, two and a half to three inches of petiole that you leave on it for the scalper. Uh, late season, the leaves are they're a little crispier um, and they flail off easier. Um, you can decrease that speed. Uh, next setting is for scalper height. Uh, so you can change, what you do is you change the geometry of the scalper. So the farther you run the scalper down, the more it's gonna open up and the bigger scalp you can take. Uh, so depending on conditions, you might have to run it down further if the beats are closer to the ground. Um, crown is, is almost flush. Or you can lighten it up as, as the beat uh, height above the ground increases. Next is paddle shaft, speed and height. So paddle shaft height is actually controls your roll bed height. So you have right and left, and uh, it's like your contour master on your combine, it automatically traces the ground. So you can change uh, left and right independently. If you're running up against the, a ditch bank or something, you might wanna change it so they're not quite the same. But what we wanna do um, is have the roll bed so we're not losing any little beats, but dropping out as much material as we can um, before we introduce it to the roll bed. Um, so the, the higher that you run the, the paddle shaft, the lower the roll bed will be to the ground and vice versa. The lower you run the paddle shaft, the higher the distance will be from the front roll to the, to the dirt. We have share speed, which we didn't touch upon when we went through the, the general overview of the machine um, but we can as you increase share speed you can increase the the cleaning action a little bit uh, the increased speed will will bust the soil up uh, a little bit more into smaller pieces so as conditions get wetter or sometimes even in dry conditions you might have to to be more aggressive with the share speed to to fragment that soil up as well you can just select it change it from zero or, well, zero, you would never run it at zero, but you can change it up to 100. Um, next is roll bed speed. When you roll, or when the green dots indicate what section you are gonna adjust. So the first ones here are the actual spiral rolls, and so you can change your speed up and down. Um, 
faster, obviously, for later season when you're trying to get more more action in the rolls to uh, to, to get them beats tumbling a little bit and to, to get more dirt off them. Um, and then slower early on because you're just trying to move the beats. Then you can select the back roll. And uh, with the back roll, you can, again, select the speed, change it up and down, um, depending on conditions, obviously. And you can also change the direction. When the white arrow is facing forward, it's going against the grain. When, you, when the white arrow is not present, it's, uh, it's going with the flow of beats. Next, you have transfer web speed. And uh, there's some dirt that, that comes out of the transfer web, but basically you wanna set that speed so you're, you're moving the beats from the header and you're not letting them bunch up in the header and getting them to the turbines. Um, heavier beats, obviously you have to, have to run that speed faster. Next, you come to the turbines. You can, select this, you can select and run the speeds up and down all together, or you can select them individually and uh, change them in relationship to each other um, to get a little more action tumbling-wise uh, to try to get rid of some more dirt. Um, after the speeds, when you roll around, you have the grate height. Number one grate is independent of two and three. So number one, you want to run, number one grate, you will get probably uh, your best bang for your buck on getting rid of material. So you want to run that grate as high as you can without, uh, without losing any uh, small beats. Um, two and three, you change the height together, but you, you do the same type of uh, setup on that as well. Run it as high as you can without losing uh, any beats.